The boy in this picture is feeling pretty sick. He's pretty awful. He's got some sort of bug and fever. And we can relate to that because we've all been sick at some point where our body temperature of the normal 98.6 raises to 101, 102, even up to like 104 sometimes because our bodies are just working really hard to fight off that virus or bacterial infection. This video is about temperature. We're defining temperature. We will understand how thermometers work and we'll convert from one temperature scale to another because there's actually three different scales for temperature, three different units for measuring temperature. By definition, temperature is defined as the average kinetic energy of the particles of matter. Temperature is defined as the average kinetic energy of the particles of matter. High temperatures feel warmer and cold ones feel colder. We measure this with a thermometer. And a thermometer works by a property called thermal expansion, which pretty much says that when you heat up a substance, it's going to expand, and when you cool it down, it shrinks. And we see this in thermometers all the time. Thermometers have alcohol in a little bowl on the bottom. It's that red or blue alcohol. They dye it to make it easier for you to, to see. But when it heats, it expands. And the only place for it to go is up this skinny little glass tube. And so that's how thermometer works. Some thermometers go up to 100 degrees Celsius. Some go up a little bit higher, like to 110. Um, and so nonetheless, that's how a thermometer works. It's, it's just expanding and contracting alcohol. Pretty handy. They used to use an element called mercury, and mercury is a cool element because it's the only liquid, at least at room temperature, it's the only liquid metal on the periodic table. It's such a unique, cool element. And here's a picture of just somebody pouring some of it into a, a little dish. It's some really cool stuff. But the problem with mercury in thermometers is that it's poisonous. So if a student like dropped a thermometer that had mercury in it, it was kind of a hazardous spill and it could hurt you. If you get mercury poisoning, it's it's not good for you. So anyway, we stopped using mercury thermometers and replaced them all with alcohol ones because alcohol is much, much more safe. It just, you know, breaks and evaporates. No big deal. Temperature is measured using three different scales. To give you an idea of each scale, sometimes it's easiest to compare it to what you already know. Most of us probably know the Fahrenheit scale the most, at least if you live in the United States. We know that water freezes at 32 degrees Fahrenheit and it boils at 212. And that's Fahrenheit. If we were to change to Celsius, it would be 0 degrees Celsius and 100 degrees Celsius. And then Kelvin is 273 and 373. So the numbers are different, but they mean all the same thing. They're just different scales. One thing to note is that the Fahrenheit and Celsius scales require a degree symbol, which is this little guy right here. They need a degree symbol, but the Kelvin scale does not. If you write temperatures in Kelvin, it's simply written as like 100... K. That's all you write. You don't need a degree symbol. Another thing to note is that Kelvin is the absolute zero scale, meaning that you cannot go negative with Kelvin. It's absolute zero. So when you hit zero K, you cannot go any lower. That's the coldest anything can possibly be. I don't know if you knew that that was possible, but that's the coldest you can actually go. You cannot go below zero K. In Celsius, that would be negative 273 degrees Celsius. You can't go any colder than that. There's actually no maximum temperature. You can get up to like millions of degrees Kelvin, millions of degrees Celsius, but you cannot go below zero K. So if you do a conversion and you drop below, you know, zero on Kelvin, you know you did something wrong. Converting between these temperature scales is actually pretty easy as long as you know the formulas that go with them. So it's really just a matter of memorization and knowing some basic math. All you have to do is uh, to go from Fahrenheit to Celsius is to take your Fahrenheit degrees, whatever they may be, subtract 32, and then divide by 1.8. And then I'll give you your answer in degrees Celsius. If you want to go from Celsius to Fahrenheit, you would do the exact opposite. So instead of dividing by 1.8, we're going to multiply by 1.8, and then instead of subtracting by 32, we're going to add 32. So we're doing this, but we're just going backwards. So it's C times 1.8 plus 32, and that gives us our degrees Fahrenheit. To go from Kelvin to Celsius, to degrees Celsius, it's easier. You don't even need a formula for this. You just need a number. The number is 273. That's how you convert. You either add 273 or you subtract 273. So if you're going from Kelvin to Celsius, you just subtract 273. And if you're going from Celsius to Kelvin, you just add 273. Let's do a couple examples here for you, and then I'll let you guys try one on your own. 
my wife and I went to Europe a couple years ago, and when we went there, we, we needed to know, you know, every morning we check the temperature for the next couple days just because it helps you know what to wear if you want to wear shorts or pants and how much water to bring, that kind of thing. So you look on the news, though, and the temperature is like 38, and you're like, whoa, it's going to be freezing today in the middle of August? Like, what's the deal? And then you kind of have this, like, stupid moment where you're like, oh, yeah, they measure in Celsius, my bad. So 38 degrees Celsius was the temperature for one day, and let's say we needed to convert that to Fahrenheit. Well, to do that, you just do 38, like the formula says, 38 times 1.8 plus 32. And make sure you put the first part in parentheses because that has to happen first before you add 32. And then you just calculate that out and it ends up being 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit. If I ever ask you to convert something on a test, this is the formula that I want you to use, the exact formula. If you're ever traveling, though, I also want to give you a shortcut because you're not going to necessarily want to calculate, you know, 38 times 1.8 when you're on the trip. Okay, you may not have a calculator. You may not want to sit down and, you know, scratch this out on paper and actually do it because it doesn't matter that much. Um, but nonetheless, an easy shortcut, an estimation route, is to just to go times 2 plus 25. Any Celsius temperature, just multiply by 2 and add 25 and you're going to get pretty darn close. So for example, we know that the temperature is actually 100.4 here, Fahrenheit, but if we do this formula, 38 times 2 is equal to 76, and then if we add 25 to that, we're going to get 101. And so, you know, 101 is pretty close to 100.4, so just wanted to share that with you because it is a nice handy tip to have when you're traveling. Our second example with the mad scientist down here, let's say this mad scientist tells us to convert 273K to degrees Celsius. Well, to convert it from Kelvin to Celsius, we just have to remember one little magic number, which is, just happens to be, 273. And we have to think, do I add or do I subtract? And once you've memorized this and you've done a few of these examples, it'll just stick with you, but 273K, to convert to Kelvin, we have to subtract 273. So the answer for that one is simply 0 degrees Celsius. That's all you have to do to convert between those two. And if I were going the other way, if I were going from Celsius to Kelvin, I would just add 273. And so just to kind of help you out with this, sometimes I would forget. When I first started doing these, I would forget whether I was supposed to add or subtract. And the thing that I remembered was if, um, if a Kelvin temperature goes below 0, it's not possible. You can't go below 0. I mean, absolute 0 is 0 K, 0 K. You can't go any lower. So if I was converting from Celsius to Kelvin and I subtracted 273 or I didn't know if I was supposed to add or subtract, if I ended up with a negative Kelvin temperature, I knew that I picked the wrong option. So I had to actually add instead of subtract. So I just tell you that to help you if you get in a situation where you're not sure and you can't remember if you're supposed to add or subtract, just remember that Kelvin cannot go below zero. If it's negative, you know you did it wrong and you have to actually add it instead. Knowing what temperature is and how to measure it is important because we can use temperature data to solve problems and understand the world better. For example, if we track people's temperature when they're sick, we can better take care of them. In another case, taking data on a solar cooker is helpful because it helps us know if our design was effective or not. In the bottom right hand corner is some data from a group of students testing their solar oven on five different occasions. And from the temperature data, you can see if their design improvements made any difference. Their first design produced a temperature of 175. Their second one, 180, rose a little bit. But then their third design dropped down to 130. That was obviously not a good design, or something happened with the experiment which told them they needed to fix something. After that, the temp rose to 192, and then their final design produced a temperature of 215. You know, sometimes we can't remember something for more than a week, and if we followed this practice of remembering something for only a short period of time, and then just forgot it, we would never make progress in the world. So, recording data, um, such as in the case of the solar cooker, allows us to notice trends and make improvements to our designs and to our science. In this video, we learned about temperature, we learned about the three different scales of temperature and how to convert between them, and we also just took a look at two of the many applications of measuring temperature in the scientific community. Take care!